you ever wonder why a bird is able to fly long distances without flapping his wings? It's because he knows his aerodynamics. He knows instinctively how to locate an updraft and may soar for hours by making efficient use of aerodynamic forces. He knows that in order to gain altitude or soar in a given direction, he must have a suitable angle of attack, even though his attitude remains in an almost constant nose down or beak down position. However, man wasn't born with built-in flight instincts, nor did his mother teach him aerodynamics. Since that part of your education was neglected, we'll try to supply it in part. First of all, it is necessary to understand the factors which give you lift. In general terms, lift equals angle of attack times density of the air times area of the wings times velocity of the airfoil through the relative wind. Of the four factors which give you lift, the pilot can control only two, angle of attack and velocity of the airfoil. In a helicopter, the velocity of the airfoil results basically from the rotation of the rotor blades. A rotor blade is a wing or airfoil which flies in a circle, thus the term rotary wing. The chief characteristic of rotary wing flight is that relative wind and resultant lift is created by the rotation of airfoils through the air. In other words, the rotary wing performs the same function for a helicopter as a fixed wing for an airplane. The only difference is that in order to produce lift, a rotary wing flies in a circle, whereas a fixed wing moves forward through the air. Whether a helicopter is in flight or at a hover, the pilot maintains a constant rotor RPM. Therefore, the way he varies lift is to vary angle of attack. To understand lift fully, however, you must understand not only angle of attack, but also angle of incidence, which is sometimes called pitch angle. On a fixed wing aircraft, the angle of incidence is determined by the relative position of the fuselage and the wing. The angle formed by the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the cord line of the wing is the angle of incidence. The cord line of a wing is an imaginary straight line extending from the leading edge to the trailing edge. For our purposes, it is used to measure angles in reference to the wing. On a fixed wing aircraft, the angle of incidence cannot be changed by the pilot. This leads us to the one essential difference between angle of incidence on a fixed wing aircraft and on a helicopter. We can see this difference by observing non-rotating blades. In a helicopter, 